Okay, if I can have... Hello? Can you hear that? Can I have everyone's attention here in the media center? At this time, uh, we'll start our uh, media availability here. And first person we have in here this morning following his uh, big announcement is Kevin Harvick, driver of the number 29 Budweiser Chevrolet. Kevin has two wins this season and is currently fifth in points. Kevin, talk to us a little bit about your week coming into Dover. Yeah, I've had you know a pretty calm week, actually. So um, played golf a few times and, and just um, relaxed and pretty normal week. Talk a little bit about the uh, upcoming All-Star Race. I know that uh, we, with coming into Charlotte next week, uh, past winner, seven different winners in the last seven races there. Um, are you excited about going into Charlotte next week too? Yeah, the All-Star Week is, is always a lot of fun. Um, you know, the, the crew guys uh, are, are a big part of, of All-Star Weekend uh, with all the pit stop competitions, and uh, they're a big part of the race. So uh, it's an important week for us just to, to kind of see what we have to, to head to the 600 with and, and – um, really evaluate um, the performance of the race car on the racetrack uh, a week before the race. So uh, it's a fun week and, and a lot of money on, on the line to, um, to see. Um, uh, I guess it's a, a really good pain test session, but it's a lot of fun too. Okay, we'll uh, open it up for questions in the Infield Media Center. We'll do our very best to make sure we can see everybody. We'll take the first question here with Claire B. and then Tom Jensen in the back. We've got wireless mics we can get to up here to Claire. Claire B. Lang, Sirius NASCAR, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. Can you talk about the meeting you had yesterday? And Tony Stewart made a comment this week that he thought maybe that they should outline the rules more specifically of how much you guys can have at it. Your thoughts on that and then how the meeting went yesterday with NASCAR? Well, I mean, the meeting was, you know, just basically um, NASCAR explaining how probation worked and, and how, um, you know, that we needed to stay away from everybody basically and, and each other. So um, that was basically the, the gist of the meeting. And, um, you know, I think as far as you talk about the, the Tony Stewart comment, I, I think for me um, it's definitely to the point where it's, it's a little bit confusing uh, with, with how it all works. I think when you, when you look at the, the boys have at it theme, um, you know, I think it's, it's obviously changing as, as we go through the process. Um, you know, I think when you, when you, when you, Go back and you, and you look at the very first major incident that you saw on the racetrack. I guess it would be Carl and, and Keselowski um, in Atlanta, and, and you, you know you saw the car go upside down. Uh, Carl was parked uh, for hooking him in the, in the right rear quarter panel, and and um, you know then it happened again, and and, and you see a lot of um, people coming out of the pits and retaliating, and, and sometimes it's a one lap penalty, and sometimes you're parked for the race, and and sometimes uh, you know you look at the you know the Keselowski and and Hamlin thing at, at Homestead, and, and it's just so there's a lot of different different things happening, and I understand that it's evolving, but from a driver's standpoint, you just you know you don't really 100% understand how it works. Uh, last week, I think you look at the you know they they've stressed a lot uh, to to me that the, that the penalties were for um, the penalties were for pit road violations uh, after the race and and the jeopardy that it that it put everybody in. Uh, after the race, and I, I understand that part, but yesterday it was all about being on probation and on the racetrack, and and so just just a little bit confused about that. Nobody really had any clarification as to, you know, what we were supposed to do and not supposed to do, other than we we're on probation for four weeks, and you know now it's you know it's a, it's a penalty on the racetrack. So um, I don't really know if it was a penalty for the racetrack because we saw the same right rear hook. Um, you know, and, and obviously there was a lot that led up to that lap. You know, I felt that Kyle got into my door. I ran him down on the back straightaway. Um, I got into him in three, then we all got three wide. And, you know, yesterday, you know, Kyle's explanation was he had a flat tire and, and hooked me on the straightaway. So it's kind of one lie after another, and, and, and you see everything that af happened after the race. And, and for, for me, um, the way that I was brought up and taught to race, when you hook somebody in the right rear quarter panel, that's the equivalent as throwing, of, of throwing your gloves off in hockey. It's, you know, that's, that's the point where everybody's reached the boiling point. And, and um, you know, basically, you know, the only answer I get out of Kyle is, is um, you know, I'm a race car driver, not a fighter. But if you drive like that, you're going to have to learn how to take care of yourself. So it's um, just a lot that, that went through the mind. And, and um, for me, it's, it's done, it's over with, and we'll move on. But uh, just a lot of questions, I think, more than, than answers were were a part of this week. How specific do you want them to be? Well, 
there just has to be consistency. I can race either way. We can flip each other over. I don't mind wrecking. I don't mind getting wrecked. I don't mind eye for an eye. I don't mind any of that. But just tell me what the rules are. Explain to me what the penalty is. If you're going to hook somebody in the middle of the straightaway, if you're going to spin them out, if you're going to retaliate, what is the penalty? Tell me what the penalty is. Nobody can tell me. A consistent answer. Tom. Kevin, Tom Jensen, speed.com, back, back behind the, the Photox. I hate to break up the hate fest, but I want to talk to you a little bit about sponsorships. You've been able with, with KHI to put together a whole variety of deals with different companies on, in the truck series, and now nationwide you had another announcement this morning. What has made your organization attractive to sponsors at a time when, when the environment for sponsorships is still really tight? And do you look at, at growing your, your business down the road and, you know, might you expand into Cup at some point or expand your nationwide and truck presence even more? Well, I think the, the unique part about everything that we have is, is um, we have a great relationship with RCR, and I think that, that that sponsorship stuff has carried over into, into the Cup Series as well. Obviously, we've put Budweiser, Jimmy Johns, and, and Ream on the car, um, and, and, and there's a couple – only a couple filling uh, races that we have left, so that that's you know basically rebuilt a whole cup program um, in the off season up until this point. So that I think the unique part about it is is that we have truck series programs, we have nationwide programs, and we have a cup program, and you can fulfill a lot of the sponsors' needs in, in any part of it. We can use the RCR piece of it. RCR can use our nationwide and, and truck piece of it, and, and there's just so many different dimensions that uh, elements that come with with each piece of the, of the sponsorship um, that you have to be creative and you have to go outside the box and you have to take a chance on, on new sponsors coming in. I use, I use Ream as an example. They, they were a, uh, an associate sponsor on my cup car and, and they came in and, and did five races on a nationwide car. And now they're virtually the whole, you know, the whole sponsorship and, and, and they're moving up to cup. So um, Jimmy John's was the same way. So you just have to, you have to take the time to, to make sure that the sponsor is having fun make sure they're getting a return on their investment and it's working for them. And, um, you know, you have to perform on the racetrack. But really, in the end, the performance on the racetrack is a, is an, is a bonus. And, um, you know, it's really about making sure that they are getting everything that they need. Bob Pockers. Uh, Bob Pockers, SceneDaily.com. Um, Kyle called your racing uncalled for and unacceptable. Is there anything that you thought you did last week that fits that definition? And how do you race him going forward? Well, I think when you look at the, you know, after I got the, I hooked you because I had a flat tire comment yesterday, you know, I, the, the incident started off a of turn two. We came off a of turn two. I was driving straight behind the car in front of me. You know, we can talk about being three feet off the wall or whatever, but I was directly behind the car in front of me coming up off the corner. And at the time, I didn't even know it was the 18. Car hit me in the door. And as soon as it hit me in the door, I drove it to the left. We got to the other end. I let it go. And... Ran, him, ran in the back of him, knocked him up the racetrack, took the position back, and, and at that moment we all got three wide and, and there wasn't really a lot of room and, and things happened, and, and then he hooked me on, on the straightaway. But um, look, the, the, wrecking, the wrecking doesn't bother me, but the only thing, the only thing that bothers me is, is, the, is the right rear quarter panel because in my mind I know what that means. And if, if you, I don't mind getting wrecked back if, it's, if, it's, if you think it's a payback for Homestead, that's fine. That, that part, those parts don't bother me. I, I understand how it all works, but when you throw them off, it's time to, time to handle it. I'll take our next question from Jim Utter, then we'll come back up front. Again, please raise your hand. We'll get a wireless mic to you. Please state your name and affiliation. Jim Utter, Charlotte Observer. Kevin, um, a lot was talked about, as you mentioned earlier, that the penalties were supposedly uh, for what transpired after the race but is that really a fair on the driver's part because aren't the things that lead up to what takes place after the race a direct result of what happens in the race can you just talk about how difficult it is i mean i'm sure you don't just uh pull a switch as soon as the checkered flag falls yeah and, and you know for me um i didn't use my car as a as a ram or try to defend you know, make a point with running into into somebody on the racetrack or knocking them out of the way after the you know I do any of that stuff after the race. I wanted to I wanted to handle it, you know, so that the guys didn't have to do more work than they already did. So the bottom line is, you know, I know there's changes this week with with the with the officials and how they're going to you know approach things after the race. But 
I mean, there was a split screen on TV. There was no NASCAR officials in sight. And, you know, they got what they wanted. And, you know, in the end, you, you suffer the penalty uh, for what is supposed to be on pit road but has carried over, you know, to, to the racetrack now. Um, you know, what it was stressed to me uh, in the hauler after the race and when I received uh, my penalty on Tuesday, it was, it was stressed to me that it was for the pit road. And so it just, it just doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me.